Well, the big story this morning was about China and its population problem and the kind of problems it could cause for China itself and even the world economy. Now, just give me some, I also want to eventually get to the stock market as well. The Dow was down about 300 points, uh, S&P 500 down a little bit, but the Nasdaq was up. Interesting story in its own right. But let's just go to China first because China is really important to the world economy and is really important to the Australian economy iron ore prices, BHP and whatever. So let's concentrate on the China story in the AFR this morning. Uh, and so the population is down 850,000 to 1.412 billion uh, Chinese people. Uh, 950, uh, 9.56 million were born and 10.41 million died. Now, India looks like it will be bigger by year's end. And so the question is, why is this happening in China? Um, experts don't think it's directly related to the pandemic. Uh, you know, I would have thought lots of people died in China and that wouldn't have helped um, the overall population um, increase in the country. But there's also been a declining birth rate and a rising cost of living. And, and the declining birth rate has been going on for quite some time. And I'll look at that in a moment. And there's been three years of COVID restrictions, which really haven't helped out a lot of couples in China, whether they really want kids. Now, this comes from a Chinese economist uh, by the name of Andy Z, And he says, property prices have gone crazy. Education costs are enormous. People are trying to live a little for themselves. Marriages have halved between 2014 and 21 and declining births have followed, he said. Now, when you look at that, when you think about property prices have gone crazy, that's happening here. Education costs going through the roof, yep, that's happening here. People are trying to do live more for themselves. And I think since the pandemic, this work from home thing is all about people realizing they can live a better life if they work from home. So people are pursuing what they want. Now, I, I call it the yuppification of the world. It's been going on probably for the last 10 years and it's just getting to China now. It's been in Western countries for a long time. But the middle class of China want to live like other people in Western countries and having too many kids gets in the way of wealth generation and the kind of things that, that they really want in their life. I think that's a trend that's going to continue. And so we start thinking about the economic implications. Well, it does threaten China. It threatened China as a, a manufacturer to the world because these people are going to be asking for higher wages. The cost advantages won't be in China. Uh, and uh, it's a global growth giver, China, so that can affect the world economy. But my argument is, OK, this is a headline today and newspapers and all media outlets, and I work for media outlets, they always like to scare the pants off people. Now, the problem is going to be for China in the future. It could take a decade or so before it becomes a real problem for China and a real problem for the rest of the world. Because as, a, as a, the point was made, um, if China is not going to be the, the, the fast grower, India will be and India will start contributing more to the world economy as well. So let's look at the impact. I think it's exaggerated um, in terms of what's going to happen to world economic growth, which is important for stock markets. Also, Vietnam, India and Africa eventually will, well, Vietnam's already doing it, so is India, but Africa eventually will start doing a lot of the stuff that China does. So that's going to be good for Africa, bringing growth up in, in Africa and also helping the world, the world grow. China will grow slower, as most Western countries do. China's just developing. So Chinese people, as I say, want to be yuppies. They want to have a good life. And by the way, Beijing is seeing it. <clears throat> They're softening their policies because they realise that people in China are a little bit cheesed off with what's going on in China, the COVID restrictions and all those sorts of things. They want life to get back to normal, uh, the pre-pandemic normal. And so we've seen China take away the bans on Australian coal and a lot of other things uh, will be developing. And I think, you know, as we see a wealthier, slower growing China, it'll mean more tourists will be coming to Australia because they'll want to have the same sort of holidays that Westerners have and they'll be buying all the, the really expensive stuff 
and we, all, we already have seen it. If you walk around Sydney or Melbourne outside the, the high fashion labels, outside their stores, there's a little red rope with lots of people queued outside. And invariably, most of them are Asian or Chinese people who have come here on holidays and they love the stuff they can buy here. So the conclusion is it will hit Chinese economic growth and world growth, but it will take, I think, decades before it has really big effects. Other countries will fill their roles in manufacturing and, and, and other kinds of services. Services, and Chinese people will be paid more and China will become more westernized uh, and they'll have a whole lot more yuppies as well. So what's the investment angle you can take out of this? Well, look at a company like LVMH, you know, Moet Hennessy, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, all those brands that are inside LVMH. Last year, when most stock prices fell, it was up 18.4% and you look at over a five year period, up 230%. The world is loving these sorts of products and high end stuff I think will keep doing well for quite some time. Overnight, the Dow was down uh, over 300 points, mainly because Goldman Sachs reported pretty badly. Interestingly, Morgan Stanley reported pretty well. So it's not all, all the uh, investment banks doing badly in America. And by the way, the Dow only has 30 stocks and Goldman Sachs is a big chunk of that, partly explaining why the Dow was down. Uh, S&P 500 was only down a little bit and Nasdaq was up about 0.14%, indicating that this inclination to starting to buy tech stocks is still happening. The chart on the screen shows you how good LVMH has done uh, in the, um, the five year period I was talking about. And I, as I say, I think these sorts of products will keep doing well because the world is becoming f filled with yuppies. That's my comment today. See you tomorrow.